Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson, and we are back for another round of our buck converter simulation tutorial. In the previous iteration of our buck converter simulation, we looked at what happens when you add in some output filtering, as well as what happens when you start to consider a little bit of additional resistance on those output capacitors. That additional resistance could come from the equivalent series resistance, as well as an intentionally placed resistor. But this time, what we want to look at is what happens when you have ringing on the switching node. Now, this is a problem that can happen generally with MOSFETs that have to switch between high voltages, and that's what we're gonna look at and what you can do about it. Let's go ahead and get started. Make sure to get your free copy of Altium Designer and you can follow along with this tutorial as well as all of our other tutorials. Okay, everybody, let's dive back into our schematic for our buck converter. So just to review, I've taken off the snubber that we had here on the right-hand side, as well as that additional inductor. Those two together formed uh, a damped RLC circuit that acts like a filter. I've also taken off any other resistors except for the load. So we've just got our 10 ohm load here. Here in this schematic, what we wanna do is consider what happens when you have noise on the switching node. Well, first things first, if we just run a transient analysis here and we look at the switching node, so that's here in red, you will see here that there is no ringing on the switching node. And then here, if I just look at my output, my output voltage, it has some ripple, um, but this can be contained using the methods that we mentioned before. So that main method is to add in some damping or add in another filter. You could also run at a higher switching frequency you could also run with a larger inductor. So there's a few different options that you have to reduce this noise. And this noise is pretty big here. I mean, it's 300 millivolts. It's about 5%. So it might be a little excessive for some applications. If we look back here, we see that there isn't any noise on this switching node. And when I say noise, I'm referring to any underdamped oscillation due to ringing. So what causes ringing on the switching node? Well, in reality, instead of looking something like this, what actually causes ringing on the switching node is a few different parasitics. So first, you have the parasitic inductance from the leads here in these uh, transistors. So if I just move this node up to make some room, I can go ahead and copy this over. And so now I've really got two sets of inductances here across these transistors. And these are normally about one to 10 nanohenries. So 10 would be the case where you have a wide trace that's being used to connect the switching node to these other two transistors here uh, in this schematic. So this could be done with the large PCB trace that would give you this 10 nanohenry inductance. It could be as small as one nanohenry or even smaller, it just depends on the physical size of the inductor package. The other thing that you'll have here is you will have some capacitance across Q2. And so if we have some capacitance across Q2, this value would be something on the order of like the 20 nanofarads. So we're gonna call this capacitor C2. We'll make sure we change this designator on this inductor. And then this value here will set to 20 nanofarads. If we include the parasitics in our leads between our two transistors, and then we include the capacitance across the junction here in transistor Q2, our simulation is gonna be quite a bit different. So if I just run this transient simulation with a little bit higher resolution, we'll actually be able to see a bit more clearly uh, what happens here with ringing. So if we run this simulation, we go ahead and zoom in here, we can start to see where some of these spikes start to occur. And that occurs due to uh, the fact that you've essentially formed an LC circuit here uh, between Q1 and Q2, and then also between Q2 and then all of the output circuitry leading to the load. So this is a pretty small inductance here. Now, as you get to physically larger packages, you could actually have much larger inductances. And so let's just, for fun, take a look at what happens when we have 100 nanohenry inductance on those leads. If we then run this, we can actually see very large amounts of ringing here. This is really extreme here. And if you look at just the amplitude of this, you can see it varies from 
about 17 and a half all the way up to 32 and a half, so 15 volt amplitude of ringing. So that's pretty extreme. A more typical value might be something like 20 nano henrys with a power transistor, and maybe something more like maybe 30 nanofarads with a power transistor. So if I go ahead and just run this and we can get kind of a sense for what the ringing is, we zoom out, we still see it's pretty extreme. So these are a little bit on the large end of these values, but you can already see that just by modulating these different values of these inductances and then this capacitance, you can see a big effect on the ringing that you have here in this circuit. Now, normally these transistors, when they're turned on, they're still gonna have non-zero resistance. So the channel resistance in those transistors as they modulate on and off will modulate between being insulating, or not perfectly insulating, but being high resistance, and then low resistance once those transistors are turned on. Once they're turned on though, the resistance is not zero. So that resistance provides a little bit of damping, but that resistance might not be included in the model for these transistors, or it's just simply not gonna be large enough in order to deal with this issue with the ringing that is produced in this circuit. And you can see the ringing very clearly here. What do you do about this? Well, the trick here is to actually add another snubber into your switching regulator. And that switching regulator snubber is simply just an RC circuit. Now, there's a little bit of a trick to sizing these snubbers if you have pretty extreme ringing in your switching regulator. So as I go ahead and add these, I'm just gonna change the designators and we'll go ahead and make this C3, not C2. And then we'll wire it back up. And then just for fun, we'll kind of start here with these values and see what the effect is on the damping. Here you can see we've got a pretty big amplitude. Um, it's about 10 volt amplitude. Now, if we add this back in and then we go into simulation dashboard and run this, you can see we've already got a decent effect here. So we've taken this oscillation and then we've gone from about 30 volt amplitude all the way down to about 28 at the peak. So the total amplitude here between these two points is looks like just about eight volts. So we've already reduced it by about a factor of 20%. So as we play with the values of this uh, resistance and capacitance, maybe we bring this resistance down, we bring this capacitance up a little bit, we can then see how we can affect the ringing on the switching node. As you keep going through this and checking, you'll notice here that we brought the resistance down on this resistor and then brought the capacitance up on this capacitor. And by doing that, we've been able to reduce the ringing quite a bit. So previously it was all the way up here at 28, and now we've brought it down significantly. The peak here is about 26, and our amplitude still a little extreme, but as we keep modulating this, we'll be able to get to a situation where we've got just the right snubber size in order to deal with this ringing. Now, what's more important here is to ensure that the way you've laid this out with two transistors, assuming you're gonna set this up with discrete transistors, is such that any inductance here is actually very small. So this is really important because as we reduce this inductance and we keep the lead inductance small, we also keep this capacitance relatively small. I'll just reduce it a little bit. You'll see here that we then go back into the simulation, run it again, and now we've got really good damping here. So it's the snubber plus the effects of the parasitics that matter here in setting this up and being able to see the ringing. So now we're down much further. So previously we were at about seven or eight volts on our amplitude with a peak of about, I think it was 24 or 25. Now we're back down to about 23 and a half with about a three volt amplitude. So that's pretty good. So why is this all important? Well, this is important because if that switching node is ringing, it's actually switching very quickly at high frequencies. And so it's creating a lot of noise. And so you wanna do what you can to try and eliminate that ringing both through smart layout choices, as well as by using a snubber if you need it. So this is one of the reasons that it's very useful to set up this kind of simulation. As you set this up, you can go through and determine what is the maximum amount of say inductance that you can tolerate if you're gonna actually use discrete components to build this. And then by doing so, you can figure out what is the best layout choices that you're gonna be able to make to make sure that you can actually hit that target on ringing. The thing I'd note about this is that just like with other issues with switching regulator noise, 
a lot of it comes down to the layout. And so if you can make this layout very tight and compact, then what you would end up doing is bringing down these inductances even more. So let's say you could get it down to five. Same here, let's say you could get this one down to five. You're gonna get much better reduction in ringing. So as you go forward and you start looking at how you're gonna build your own switching regulator, maybe it needs to operate at high voltage or high current and you can't do it with an integrated circuit, or with a module, these layout choices and this inductance is gonna be the main factor that influences noise generation at the switching node. So if you see ringing at the switching node, that's gonna be why you see it. Now, this issue with ringing at the switching node due to inductance is not something that's unique to power converters. So here, what I'm looking at here in this circuit, we basically have like almost half of, of an H bridge here, right? We've got our high side MOSFET here at Q1, we've got our low side MOSFET here at Q2. So we've got a half bridge configuration here. Let's say you had a driver circuit that you were building from discrete MOSFETs. Um, in that case, the inductance of those leads coming off of that H bridge arrangement, that inductance is going to create the exact same effect if you had any other type of circuit. So like I said, this is not something that is unique to DC, DC converters. So whenever you have these MOSFETs in this arrangement like this, and you're going to put them into a PCB layout, what you need to do is make sure that you bring them very close together so that this lead inductance is actually reduced to the greatest extent possible. So that's one reason why if you look at some motor drivers or you look at some power converters that actually use these sets of MOSFETs in them, they don't space them out on different areas of the board. They actually bring them in really tight and close together so that they can keep this lead inductance very low. Okay, so now let's look at what happens if we were to say add back in our output filtering that we had before. And just add back in these LC elements. As you may recall previously, this one was at, I believe, 68. And then we had this capacitor, I believe, at the same value. So we'll go ahead and change its designator and we'll finish wiring it back up and see what happens. So even if we add back in this output filter on this circuit and we run this again, Let's check and see what it actually does to the switching noise. We can see that it does absolutely nothing for the switching noise at the switching node. So this is very important because if you're working with a power regulator circuit and you see this kind of noise at the switching node, you are not gonna be able to eliminate that noise at the switching node just by adding a filter on the output. The output filter is only going to affect the output voltage that gets sent to the load. It is not going to affect the uh, noise that you measure at the switching node. And in particular, it's not going to affect any of this ringing. And we can see this on most of these pulses. We still have this ringing going on. Keep that in mind as you are working through any kind of noise issues in your power regulator circuit, where you apply that filtering doesn't necessarily mean it's going to affect all of those noise sources what is actually more important in this case where we have this ringing at this node here is that we add in an appropriately sized snubber circuit. Now, we have some articles that we're gonna to link to in the description that's gonna run you through some of the issues that you might find in these simulations as well as how you can go through some design steps to properly size these filtering elements and these snubber elements so that you can deal with these noise issues in DC-DC converters. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to go get your copy of Team Designer. You can follow along with all these tutorials that we have. There are other tutorials that are gonna be coming up. And of course, if there is a tutorial that you would like to see, leave it in the comments section. You can also send it over to YouTube at altium.com. Not altium at youtube.com. Send it over to youtube at altium.com. All right, thanks everybody. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. Yeah.